my name is Jeremy Kim, and I'll be presenting Queer Filter, uh, which is fast location filtering in DNA remapping using processing and memory technologies. Uh, this work was presented at uh, Asia Pacific Bioinformatics Conference in 2018, and it was published in DMG Genomics. Um, and you can find the paper at the QR link and uh, link here. So I'll start off with the executive summary. Um, first, genome read mapping is a very important problem. And it's the first step in uh, genome analysis. And read mapping is basically an approximate string matching problem. Uh, where we basically find the best fit of uh, maybe around 100 character strings into a 3 billion character dictionary for, for the human case, since the human is around 3 billion uh, nano or base pairs. Uh, currently, alignment is the best method for determining whether, a, whether the similarity exists between two strings, but it's very expensive. Um, and we propose an, align, uh, an algorithm called Grim Filter which accelerates read mapping by reducing the number of required alignments. And so Grim filter can be accelerated using processing memory, and <clears throat> it simply requires uh, simple logic in the 3D stack logic layer in 3D stack memory, and it utilizes the high internal memory bandwidth uh, to perform parallel filtering. And so we find that uh, just the filter um, can perform or improve the performance of end-to-end -end read mapping by 3.7x speed up. So I'll start off with the motivation and goal. Um, first, uh, sequencing is the process of determining the series of nucleotides within a DNA strand. And there are four uh, possible nucleotides that are referred to as A, C, G, and T. And basically, today's machines can only sequence or determine the uh, series of smaller strands, which we call reads. And reads are on the order of 100 base pairs to uh, 20K or 100K base pairs nowadays. Um, the human genome is approximately 3 billion base pairs, and so we need to cut these genomes into a bunch of smaller uh, reads which are independently sequenced and then reconstructed. So read mapping is the first step in analyzing uh, someone's genome so that we can detect predisposition to diseases, uh, personalized medicine, etc. And so our goal is to accelerate end-to-end read mapping, um, end-to-end performance of read mapping. So I'll first talk about uh, read mappers, and then <clears throat> uh, discuss how we can use our filter. So the purpose of a filter is to, or sorry, the purpose of a, a read mapper is to take a number of sequenced reads and reconstruct the original genome. So we have a reef reference genome which exhibits around 99.9% .9 similarity across all uh, human human samples. And so we can essentially take these reads and map them to the reference genome uh, with some minor edits allowed. And basically those minor edits are the um, nucleotides that make you uh, unique. And so because of this high similarity, we have long sequences in reads that match perfectly to the reference genome. And so in this example here, uh, we have an 11 uh, base pair long read and nine sequential base pairs match perfectly within the reference genome in this particular location. And so we can use this information to uh, use a hash table to quickly map the reads and reduce the number of locations that we want to search uh, in the reference genome. So <clears throat> now I'll go into uh, hash table or how a hash table would be used in uh, read mapping. So in order to generate this hash table, um, well, okay, so basically if you want to map any read into a reference genome, uh, you need to generate this hash table uh, for the reference genome such that we can map any number of reads to this particular reference genome. Uh, the hash table is comprised of keys that are k-length sequences, which we refer to as k-mers, um, and the values are the locations in which these k-mers exist uh, within the reference genome. And so in this example here, uh, our k-mer is of length 5. Um, and so this hash table, we basically generate all possible permutations of five MERS um, and their location list within the reference genome. And just to reiterate, we find that AAAAT exists in base pair number 36 and 434 of the particular reference genome. Uh, we do this for every single permutation, and then finally we can use this, uh, we can query this hash table to identify locations uh, within the reference genome that we want to map to. So uh, some of these slides might look familiar to you, but I'll go over this in a little bit more detail. So um, 
When we want to use this hash table in actual read mapping, we take a given read sequence and cut them into a bunch of smaller k-mers. And we need to cut them into basically x plus 1 k-mers, where x represents the number of allowable errors or edit distance between uh, a read and a reference string. So here I'll show an example of just one particular k-mer from the re read sequence. But note that we have to do this many times for every single read and for millions or billions of reads. So <clears throat> first we take the k-mer and we query the hash table and we get our location list. Uh, we then extract the particular reference strings from the reference genome using the location list. And we use this to map all of the reads, or this particular read, into all of the uh, locations that we found. And so this alignment process here is actually pretty expensive and is a O of n squared um, algorithm. And uh, it turns out that many of these matches or many of these alignments result in mismatches uh, because we're using such, such little information. Uh, just, just basically, we just need a camer to match in order for the remapper to say that we need to align this entire read against this read string. And so it turns out that 99.9% .9 of these locations result in uh, mismatches. And so we want to filter these out uh, by trying to use more information within the read to determine which locations we don't have to run alignment on. <coughs> So that's where location filtering comes into play. Uh, alignment is expensive and requires uh, n squared dynamic programming algorithm, and we need to align millions and billions of them. So it gets expensive uh, the more that you have to do. Uh, modern read mappers reduce the time spent in alignment um, either one of two ways. The first is by optimizing the algorithm for alignment, uh, which has been iterated on heavily. <clears throat> and the second way is to try and reduce the number of alignments uh, by filtering out mismatches quickly. And so both of these methods are used by mappers today, uh, but filtering has basically uh, replaced alignment as the bottleneck. So our goal is to accelerate read mapping by improving this filtering step. Now I'll show you uh, the same process of the hash table based read mapper uh, using a filter. So again, we take out a camer from the read sequence and we query the hash table. Uh, we send these locations that we find to the filter, and the filter quickly uh, determines which ones will definitely result in a mismatch. And then we uh, extract the sequences from the reference genome again, and we run alignment on the remaining locations that pass the filter. So note that uh, some of this alignment might still result in uh, mismatches, and we call these false negatives. And these are basically uh, locations that pass the filter, but then do not pass alignment. <clears throat> so our proposal is grid filter. Um, I will talk about the first the data structures that are necessary, uh, bins and bit vectors. So we partition the genome into uh, large sequences called bins, and this is just highlighting a particular segment of the reference genome, and we are looking at a particular bin of this segment. And so a bin just represents, or a bin is just a segment, um, and they are represented by bit vectors, which holds the occurrence of all small tokens uh, within the bin. And so we can basically quickly tell whether a small 5-mer exists within this bit vector. So actually, a uh, token here is different from a k-mer. Uh, k-mers are typically uh, tens of base pairs long. And in this, uh, we find that tokens on the order of between 4 and 6 is uh, effective. So in this example, we find that five A's exist in this bin, and then CC, CCT does not exist in this bin. And also to account for matches that might straddle across bins, we need to have overlapping bins, such that a read will always fall within a single bin. So let's look at the uh, overhead, uh, the capacity overhead of these bins. Uh, basically, every single bin um, across the whole genome requires a bit vector, and the bit vector size is dependent on the token size. So, because we have four nucleotides, um, uh, the number of bits needed to represent the bit vector will be four to the n, uh, where n is the token size, basically. And so, every single bin has its own bit vector, um, and to calculate the actual size required to store all this information, um, we just multiply 4 to the n times t, where t is the number of uh, bins that we split the genome into. And so we find that uh, a, a nice uh, parameter is using bin size of 200 and um, a token size of 5. 
And this actually results in a memory footprint of just under 4 gigabytes, which is uh, perfectly reasonable for today's memory devices. So now uh, let's talk about how we can check a bit. So basically here, um, we take a read sequence and we extract the tokens and uh, note that these tokens are overlapping so that we can uh, extract more information out of the read. Um, we also read the bit vector that we are checking uh, the bin's existence of the read in. And then we query this bit vector with the found tokens and uh, we essentially are counting the number of tokens that exist in the read and also in the bin. So we sum all these values and then compare it to this threshold. And if it does not meet the threshold, then it'll obviously not match. But if it is greater than the threshold, then it's possible that it might. And we need to do alignment to figure out exactly whether uh, we should move on with analysis on this location. So how would we integrate GrimFilter into a mapper? Um, here, again, uh, GrimFilter takes read sequences and then a uh, number of seed locations for this read sequence, uh, which is extracted from the hash tables. And GrimFilter uh, outputs basically a bit vector that represents whether a certain bin, um, we need to check a certain bin for the existence of this read. And so uh, we send all the possible seed locations to translate them to bit, bin numbers. <coughs> And then we check this uh, seed location filter bit mask. And if we find a one, then we need to go on with the alignment. Otherwise, we can discard the location. And that's where most of the improvement or the performance actually comes from. So we, again, extract the reference uh, segments. And then we run the edit calculation with the read mapper that we are employing. And then finally, we get the uh, correct mapping. So how would we use 3D stack memory to um, improve or to, to help to aid in grid filter? Um, grid filter, as a recap, uh, is comprised of simple operations. Uh, all you need to do is a sum and a comparison, and it's also highly parallel. So each of these bins can be operated on independently, and there are many, many bins. And it's also memory bound since we have so much data stored uh, about the four gigabytes of bit vectors worth, and we need to constantly access that. Um, so, so we find that these, these properties together make it make Grim filter a good algorithm to be run in 3D stack memory. So let's talk about 3D stack memory a little bit. Um, <clears throat> it's basically DRAM, except stacked three-dimensionally. And all these layers are connected with vertical wires that we refer to as TSVs. Um, and there's also a logic layer which we can uh, put our custom logic, simple operations, and uh, do, do operations very quickly within the actual device. And so the benefit of the TSVs is that it enables extremely high bandwidth internally. Um, and also the logic layer helps to perform the processing memory operations, which offloads the computation um, to this layer and therefore alleviates the memory bus. And so we can embed group filter operations into the DRAM logic layer and then appropriately distribute these bit vectors that we talked about um, throughout the memory layers. So there's been many work on 3D stack memory. Um, there's HBM and HMC. Um, and now and I'll talk about how we can actually lay out group filter um, in 3D stack memory. So, Every single DRAM layer is uh, basically an array of banks, and every bank is an array of cells with a row buffer. And so uh, these row buffers is, uh, is what the TSVs connect to the logic layer and that goes through all the different layers. And basically, the row buffer is the uh, unit for which you can transfer data across the layers. So, <clears throat> so if we actually uh, lay out our bit vectors in memory such that they are in column order. Um, a single row will indicate a single token's existence across many consecutive bins. And so using this information, we can uh, move an entire row down and check a single token's existence across the entire bin uh, in the logic layer, and then continuously uh, go row by row depending on which tokens are of interest and run our, run our algorithm on uh, a number of bins independently. So, yes. Uh, now let's talk about the 
uh, logic layer. Since Grim Filter is comprised of very simple uh, operations, all we need is an incrementer, an accumulator, and a comparator, as well as a buffer. Um, and we need one of these for every single bin that we are comparing in parallel. <clears throat> and we find that uh, it, it requires very low area overhead and it's very simple to implement. Uh, and there are more details in the paper. So now let's talk about the results. Um, basically, we simulate our performance using an in-house 3D stacked DRAM simulator and we evaluated 10 real read data sets uh, from the 1000 Genomes project and each of these data sets consisted of 4 million reads of length 100 and we evaluated performance as well as false negative rate which again is the number of locations that pass the filter but uh, result in a mismatch after alignment. We compare against uh, FastHash which when, when using Mr. Fast, um, which is a read mapper, um, but we do note that Grim Filter can be used with any read mapper. Uh, the x-axis on this, uh, this graph shows the, uh, the different read sets, and the y-axis shows the time it takes to uh, map the, the entire set of these reads um, in terms of seconds, in terms of thousands of seconds. Um, and so here, uh, lower is better. Uh, and Grim Filter is in dark green, and the fast hash is in light green. And this is just uh, the performance of the entire read mapper end to end uh, when we just swap out the filter. We also use uh, error tolerance of 5%, and this is where we found the most uh, benefit. So we find across our data sets, we get between 1.8 and 3.7x performance benefit, and on average, 2.1x uh, performance benefit. And this is due to the software hardware co-design um, that we implemented. When we look at the uh, false negative rate, uh, again, the x-axis shows the different read sets, and the y-axis shows the false negative rate. And so lower is better again here. And on average, we get about a 6x uh, reduction in false negatives. And this is because Grim Filter utilizes uh, more information that's available in the reads uh, to the filter. So there are other results in the paper uh, that I didn't discuss. They include sensitivity of execution time and false negative rates to error tolerance of string matching, uh, the execution time breakdown in read mapping, and sensitivity studies on the filter parameters uh, like token size, bin size, and error tolerance. And so, in conclusion, we proposed an in-memory uh, filtering algorithm to accelerate end-to-end -end read mapping. And the key idea is to introduce a new representation of coarse-grained segmentation of the reference genome. And we use massively parallel in-memory operations to identify the read presence within these coarse-grained segments of the reference genome. And so, our key contribution is a customized filtering algorithm for 3D stack DRAM and compared to the best previous filter, we get a significant uh, performance benefit as well as a reduction in false negatives. And also Grim Filter is a universal filter and can be applied to any read mapper. And that concludes my talk. Thank you, I'll take any questions. Questions? I have a question. Uh, do you plan to look at other applications to use with uh, the crossing memory approach you apply? Uh, within like the bioinformatics space? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, so that we haven't exactly targeted any <coughs> or come up with any specific use cases yet, but that would be the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you again. Yeah. Our next speaker.